such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I borrowed that bit from Thomas Jefferson. It seems he left out women. Work. <laughs> and that was a common oversight at the time. Yes. Uh, so then I declared all the wrongs that men have perpetrated against women. Oh, such as. Oh. <laughs> he has compelled us to follow laws in the formation of which we have had no voice, and he has withheld from us rights given to most ignorant and degraded of men. <clears throat> and even the lowest of men have more say than the most righteous woman. He has monopolized nearly all the profitable employments, and of those we are allowed to follow, we make less than men. We can't get any good jobs or an education. <laughs> and if we're married, we are civilly dead in the eyes of the law, because the law gives him the power to withhold even the money we do make. Our husbands own everything we make. That's why I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> By the laws of coverture, we are compelled to obedience to our husbands. The law gives him the right to deny us our liberty and even to administer chastisement. Mm -hmm. Our husbands may beat us if they wish. 
That's another why I don't have one. <laughs> and he also denies us our inalienable right to exercise the elective franchise. That means we can't vote. <laughs> That wives should submit to their husbands submissively, weakly. That whatever they say, their wives should obey, unquestioningly, stupidly, meekly. Our husbands would make us their own and them take without ever a wherefore or why for it. But I don't, and I can't, and I won't, and I shan't, so I will speak my mind if I die for it. I know women who do have husbands so true that they stand by their wives with a blessing for their feelings and brains their rights and campaigns, while others stand firm and oppressing. Let vanity will, then bid us be still and silent, a price will pay high for it. For I don't, and I can't, and I won't, and I shan't. Let us all speak our minds if we die for it. Now, hold on a minute, just a forsaken minute. Who are you? Me? I'm a naysayer. All brothers <laughs> Everywhere progress rears its ugly head. There's some naysayer like me to tell you, nay, you can't do that. Or nay, that's not the custom. Or nay, you're rocking the boat. Or nay, that'll lead to the end of civilization and all of society. <laughs> I take it you don't like my sentiments. Nay, I'm fond of the sentiments. Women folk have some legitimate complaints. But I am concerned about one thing. What is that? That part where you mentioned the elective franchise. You're giving women the vote? Nay, hey, that's the one. Why would you suggest such a preposterous thing like that? Why would you want to sully womanhood with the filth of politics? The same reason America fought against England. We women pay taxes and get no representation. Woman ought to remain in her proper sphere. Housekeeping, childcare, religion. Uh, woman is the divinely appointed guardian of the home. Why complain of your dependence when you occupy such a lofty position? It is the holiest, most responsible, and queen-like position assigned. <laughs> Why, if women should vote, they might form their own party, a woman's party. And that would be more dangerous than labor against capital. Nay, the history of civilization has proven that a weakening of manpower of nations is but a pre-runner of decadence. You're asking for emancipation from the laws of nature. It will change the nature of one thing very much, and that is the financial position of women. It will put her in a position where she can earn her own way, go out into the world in equal competition for the struggle for life, so that she shall not be compelled to take such positions as men choose to accord her, or take such pay as men choose to give her. So if we affirm a woman's right to vote and to become lawmakers, lawyers, and clergy, and to do all that men now do. Do we also resolve that men wash dishes? Yes. <laughs> Darn socks? Wear trinkets and look beautiful? Nay. A vote for suffrage is a vote for organized female nagging forever! <laughs> so, why? You would have all the drunks and idiots, horse racing, rum selling rowdies, ignorant foreigners, and silly boys vote, <laughs> while all the women are thrust out from the rights given to all citizens. The right is ours. We must have it. We will use it. Nay, it is very simple. Women have no right to vote because in times of war you are not required to bear arms. Oh, but we bear the armies! Boil your shirt, you naysayers get my goat, always disagreeing, and you got no good reason for it. Change their mind. I asked him what a woman's rights 
up and keep the woman in her spear. I saw a man in tattered garb forth from the tavern coast. He squandered all his cash on drink and starved his wife at home. I asked him, should not woman vote? He answered with a sneer. I've taught my wife to know her place. Keep woman in her sphere. No one will take you seriously. <clears throat> Rights of no sex. <gasps> Frankish <Frank> Douglas! Frederick Douglas! <laughs> <laughs> That's right, former slave and famed orator, Frederick Douglas. And I have something to say about women's suffrage. All that distinguishes man as an intelligent and accountable being is equally true of woman. And if that government is only just which governs by the free consent of the governed, then there should be no reason in the world to deny to woman the exercise of the elective franchise. Man, I can't argue with Frederick Douglass. Give women the vote! <laughs> I'm not a naysayer vanquished. I wish all naysayers were that easy to convince. You have the argument, but custom and prejudice are against you and they are stronger than truth and logic. The vast majority accept the conditions into which they are born and don't want things to change. Nay, I wish you luck. When men and women think of a new question, the first step in progress is, is taken, but the trouble is, is the vast number of people don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Douglas is persuasive. Oh, he has always supported women's suffrage. Just as we have always supported the abolition of slavery. So oh, but what does abolition have to do with women's suffrage? Oh, it's the same cause, giving voice to those who have none. During the Civil War, we led a petition drive to end slavery. A petition drive was the only political action a woman was permitted to do. We collected over 400,000 signatures, the most signatures ever presented to Congress. And those signatures helped Congress pass the 13th Amendment. Ding, ding. It's time to read the amendment. <laughs> From your programs, everyone, the 13th Amendment. <clears throat> Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for a crime, whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. In other words, slavery was abolished. Emancipation! <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Another thing. I've been fighting for the abolition of slavery since long before the war. Look, she's wearing bloomers. Out in public? I got this look from Amelia Bloomer herself. Mm. You look like a gymnast. How about you stand the ridicule? It's true that I am rudely gazed at in public and in private, and I'm the constant subject of criticism, and I'm chased by boys in the streets with jeers and laughter, but I care not for the incredible freedom I enjoy. I'm always ready for a brisk walk through rain, sleet, or snow, always ready to climb a mountain, jump a fence, work in a garden, any necessary locomotion, like a captive set free from a ball and chain. Well, it might be helpful if you introduce yourself. Of course, my name is Lucy Stone, and I guess I'm most well known for not giving up my last name when I got married. Oh. And we removed the word obey from our wedding vows. A wife should no more take her husband's name than he hers. And uh, what were you saying about the Civil War? It was abolition that sowed the seeds for the women's movement. We must not forget that abolition is our primary cause. We have to break stronger fighters than those that held the slave. Emancipation was just the beginning. Soon we'll be fully enfranchised. Oh, wait, are you saying that Congress intends to pass an amendment giving black men the vote but not women? Yes. And you support this? Of course. That's why the war was fought. That's why so many died. It's what we've crusaded for all these years. Our abolitionist friends said they supported women's rights and they betrayed us. All they really care about is the slavery issue. If they win the vote for the ex-slaves, they will promptly forget about us. Our cause must not stand in the way of progress for black people. This country can only deal with one issue at a time. It is one issue. Universal suffrage. Votes for all. Equality for all. Man, woman, black, white. Most people don't see it that way. This is the Negro's hour. Women's suffrage will come later. If black men are given the vote and not women, it will be another 50 years before we see equality. Worse than that, it will make two million black men tyrants over two million black women who, until now, have been the equals to the men at their side. If you will not give the whole loaf of justice to everyone, if you are determined to hand out piece by piece the crumbs of suffrage, at least give it first to women. Give it at least to the most capable of women, educated, intelligent, because what our government is sorely needing at this time is intelligence and morality. You question the morality of the abolitionists? Oh, I don't question your morality. I do question where your priorities lie. I was a woman before I was an abolitionist. I plead not only for the slave, but for suffering humanity everywhere. I do mean to labor for the elevation of our sex, but now I must appeal to the wail of the slave, his clanging chains, and his utter need. So you would have the slaves of yesterday be the lawmakers of today, making laws for the daughters of Adams and Jefferson, women of wealth and education. No, if you will not give the vote to men and women all at the same time, I cannot support this. Uh, you would deny the vote to blacks, then you are no better than the white man. No better. No better. A woman knows what it is to be born to contempt, to inferiority, to degradation. A woman more fully identifies with what it is to be the slave than man will ever be. Man is born to do whatever he can, but the women and the blacks, they know no such privilege. Fine, they have a say in this matter. Yes, Frederick Douglass. Yes, please, speak up. <laughs> yes. I'm sympathetic to your view, Elizabeth. But for us, suffrage is a matter of life and death. When women are hunted down from their homes and strung up upon lampposts, when their children are torn from their arms and their brains are dashed out upon the pavement, when they are objects 
to insult and outrage at every turn, and their children are not allowed in schools, then, and only then, will they have an urgency to obtain the ballot equal to our own. Yeah. not apply to black women as well? Yes, but not because she is a woman, but because she is black. <clears throat> well, I disagree. <gasps> you can't disagree with Frederick Douglass. <laughs> but I do. Respectfully, I do. Women must be given a voice. Well, I wish you the best of luck, Mrs. Stanton. You understand that there is no struggle. There is no progress. You won't accept anything less than a revolution. That's right. Woman has not been consulted from the time of Moses down to present day. We have been nothing but property to be used up and discarded by man as he will. There is nothing short of a revolution that will change things. There are many of us who do not oppose this amendment or like the sound of a revolution. We must all work together in harmony for suffrage or it will fail. Then let it fail. Time for the reading. Oh. <laughs> let Mrs. Lucy Stone ring the bell if she wants her amendment. Um, hear ye, hear ye. It's time for the reading of the amendment. <laughs> the 15th Amendment. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of race, color, or previous Office at your earliest convenience. I'm sure we can work this out. Is this your usual method of serving a warrant? This is not a usual warrant, ma'am. I want no special treatment. I would rather be in prison than give up my sacred right to vote. I demand you take me to your commissioner at once. Oh, all right. Well, follow, follow me then. All right. Uh, all rise. The judge may say are presiding. All rise. All rise. All rise for Judge Naysayer. <laughs> Nay, you may be seated. <laughs> Let 
let it be known that the accused, Miss Susan B. Anthony, without having a lawful right to vote in her election district, being then and there a person of the female sex, contrary to the statute of the United States and against the peace of the United States, did knowingly and unlawfully vote. Your Honor. I, nay, a woman may not testify on her behalf. They are incompetent to do so. What? Your Honor! I instruct the jury to find the defendant guilty. Uh, your Honor, your, my, my natural rights, my civil rights, my political rights, my judicial rights are all like ignored, robbed of my fundamental privilege of citizenship. The court cannot allow you to continue. Your denial of my citizen's rights is the denial of my right to consent as one of the government. It is the denial of my right of representation as one of the staff. It is the denial of my right up to a trial of a jury by my peers as a defender against mob. Therefore, it is the denial of my sacred right to life, liberty, and property. The sentence of the court is that to pay a fine of $100. Resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. I shall never pay a single dollar of your unjust penalty. And I never did. <laughs> Eventually, one of the cases made it to the Supreme Court, and the ruling was unanimous. Citizenship merely means membership in a nation and nothing more. And the amendments did not give women the right to vote. That is for the states to decide. So, it's up to the states, is it? If citizenship is not guaranteed in every state, there is no end to the cunning devices and trickery that will, that will happen to keep one group or another out of suffrage. What can we do? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to let the Supreme Court stop us. I'm going to Congress. You are zealous and constant, Mrs. Stanton. That is your strength, but this battle is in the states. No, we must have a congressional amendment, otherwise women's votes can be undone. There are too many who do not approve of your methods. This is just the beginning. We need a whole host of female reforms. We need the eight hour workday, equal pay, divorce reform. And how will you gain any of that if you cannot convince a single state to support suffrage? Ah. Uh, I will start a national association, the National Women's Suffrage Association. Then I'll create my own organization, the American Women's Suffrage Association. Fine. Fine. I wish you the best of luck. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> 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 what about you? Well, I'm with Lizzie, because she can't tour and lecture and raise seven kids at the same time, and I can't uh, write a speech to save my skin, so we work together. She forges the lightning bolts, and I throw them. <laughs> <laughs> and throw lightning bolts she did. In 1878, we were invited to the United States Capitol to introduce the woman suffrage amendment to Congress. Let's read it. Oh, ding ding! It's time for the reading of the amendment. All right, everyone, from your programs. Let's read the 19th amendment. Mm -hmm. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. The amendment failed to pass the committee. Back to Zach and that committee for nearly 10 years. 
for finally making it on the Senate floor, <laughs> where it was promptly voted down. The amendment was reintroduced at each congressional session for the next 30 years. Oh. It's the states that get to decide who gets to vote. So you should be going to the states. Oh, oh. oh. We've, we've been to the states. I have traveled by train, stage, ferry, horseback, muleback, and I've hoofed it to every village, town, and settlement that would listen to me talk about women's suffrage. It's the states that made the laws keeping women from the vote in the first place. But any state you win builds support for an amendment. Oh. It must be proven first in the states. <laughs> there must be at least one of our 37 states willing to take up our cause. <laughs> <laughs> well, howdy there, Miss Stone. I come from the Wyoming Territory. We like to give women the vote. Wyoming Territory? But why? Well, you see, we've only got one woman for over six men out there. <laughs> so we figure if we let him vote, maybe more of them will move out west. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't much else to offer out on the frontier. <laughs> the daily necessities of life overshadow the niceties. But at least we think a, a, a woman's voice is equal to a man's. A white man's, anyway. <laughs> there you have it, ladies. Thanks to a bunch of lonely prospectors, Wyoming country <laughs> territory has become the first government in the country to give women the vote. When Washington said that we'd have to give up the vote if we wanted to become a state, while we said we'd stay out of the Union a hundred years if it meant we had to come in without our women. And it worked. In 1890, Wyoming became the first state to give women the vote. Yeehaw! Our lives have been such a waste. Oh, your lives have not been a waste. I mean, your work has inspired a whole new generation of women. This is Lucy Stone's daughter, Alice Stone Blackwell. My mother passed away in 1893, but I'm following in her footsteps, and I think it's time for us to end the rivalry between our two organizations. We need to work together for all of women's rights, including the right to vote. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's time to go to the States. <laughs> There's been progress from the West. If we keep pushing, we can get more women to the polls, even if they're only allowed to vote for the local school board. We're not spring chickens anymore. We can't tour and 
show like we used to. Well, if Lucy Stone's daughter can join the fight, then maybe my daughter can too. on state legislatures, and 56 full-scale statewide campaigns. Most of them failed. <laughs> but we kept pushing until the West fell. Oh, Washington, Washington, California, California Nevada, Nevada, Wyoming, Wyoming whoops, and, and Kansas. Kansas. Anybody that you want to be. Anybody? I suppose I could be Alice Paul. She's a Quaker oh. like me, and the Quakers always saw women as equals. I don't know that you want to be Alice Paul. Why <laughs> not? Oh, well, she went off to England to join their suffrage movement, and they do things a little different over there. How is that? Um, the English suffragists are very militant. They disrupt meetings, break windows, set off bombs, get arrested. If she tries any of that here, could easily ruin all of our progress. Mercy me, I've been arrested too. Sounds like just the kind of pot stirring our country. <laughs> all right, young women, I've done my part. Time to roll up your sleeves and set your mind to making history and wage such a war that the world will respect our sex. <laughs> Now you need to organize, educate, agitate. Mm -hmm.
a change is mine. That's why we need deeds, not words. We're going to march on Washington. Are you mad? We'll be arrested. There'll be too many of us to arrest. We're going to show up at his inauguration with an army of women marching in unison right down Pennsylvania Avenue like a military parade. That's we'll right. show him we can't be ignored. It's not hard to change a politician's mind. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> no one has ever marched on our nation's capital before for a demonstration. Well, I don't know why. It seems like the ideal place to do it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we organized a grand spectacle of a parade with 36 floats, 6 golden chariots, 10 marching bands, and over 10,000 participants, all led by a woman on a white horse. <laughs> states to pass the amendment. 
Some were so excited to support women's suffrage, they ratified it immediately. And some were not so supportive, because you see, 1920 was an election year. Some politicians passed it or supported it right away because they believed that these newly enfranchised women would support their campaigns, but others didn't want the wild card in their campaign. See, so we pushed and we pushed till we had 35 states and we just needed one more. There are only two states left to vote, and guess where they're located? The South! Why is it always the South? <laughs> it isn't a time for the South to quit being the tail end of creation. <laughs> the last two states left to vote are in North Carolina and Tennessee. And North Carolina wouldn't hear it because it was an election year. That just leaves Tennessee to place the capstone on the Temple of Justice. Well, you've never seen a circus like that summer in Nashville. <laughs> Naysayers and supporters descended on the state capitol, pleading to their state senators with legal advice, illegal booze, and some hooey about states' rights, and the attention of a lot of pretty women. <laughs> Suffragists and antis turn the city inside out. With meetings here and meetings there, to turn a sane man's head. Before it's our we men will pass our votes to them instead. I met an art churchman and he wildly grasped my hand. Said he, What will become of all the good wrought in this land? The women in the parishes refuse to work or pay unless they have a voice and vote on church election day. I turned and hustled onward when I heard another shout. The suffragists are coming and they're on their way. Look out! With meetings here and meetings there, they turn the same man's head. I'm just an old man and this is a sin. <laughs> <laughs> I too would like I do their leader said. We come because of yours, sir. Help us gain our own instead. We are the most persistent creatures, what you tell us they. Win the vote or know the reason by election day. The air was quiet for a while, it came an awful wail. The antis now are on the job, their work will turn you pale. Back to their home, all womankind they boarded with the rocky. Or on the citizen industry, that falls in frightful hockey. What trick is this? The men demand that brave and fiercely swear. Fashion glass and deviltry, it will not even compare. To the suffragists we now appeal, bring back our labor pray. And you shall have a ballot by the next election day. We put everything we had into Tennessee, but the naysayers came out in full force, and so did the state senators. I'd say nay to this amendment. Uh, women's suffrage only reopens the entire Negro suffrage question, a loss of states' rights, another period of Reconstruction horrors, which will introduce a set of female carpetbaggers as bad as their male prototypes from after the Civil War. Oh, that's right, Senator. There is nothing to be gained from women's suffrage, and much needs loss. <sighs> Beware, men of the South! Heed not to the sound of the suffrage siren. Seal your ears to her vocal wiles. I have all the rights I want. <laughs> I never understood how a woman could be against having a vote. Oh, well, there are those of us who oppose it on general principle, and then there are those who support it, but not as a national amendment which tramples states' rights. Oh, and which one are you? Oh, I'm a woman of principle, of course. Oh, I should have known by your prunes and prisms expression. Oh, my wife has presented me with eight beautiful children. Isn't that not a better lot's work than exercising the right of suffrage? I have yet to meet a man worth repeating eight times, and that's the <laughs> truth. <laughs> Destroyers are at our left, the wreckers are at our 
our bones, and you are nothing but an anarchist. Why, that is just an utter fabrication. Did you not say that suffrage knows no bias of race, color, or sex? Yes, but... And have you not entertained Negroes in your home, and have you not entertained, been entertained in Negro homes such as Mr. Why, that is just a malicious appeal to sectional prejudice. A few years after this amendment has been passed, you will find that Congress will compel we people of the South to give to the Negro men and women their full rights at the ballot box. And then you will find some of your counties sending up Negro representatives to this house, just like they did uh, 50 years ago after the 15th Amendment. You are working to destroy the states and enslave the American people. This federal suffrage amendment is nothing but a nothing but a deliberate conspiracy to crush the will of the American public. If this present legislature ratifies, it won't be because of the socialist influence at work on that bill. There are no socialist women in Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee has an opportunity to uh, immortalize itself as the redeemer of the republic by redeeming the principle of true representation of the uh, Union of States, without which American democracy must perish from the earth. Now, when Tennessee finally got around to voting, the amendment was tied, 48 to 48, and it all came down to one single vote, and it came down to, you guessed it, Senator Naysayer. <laughs> He was the youngest man in the Tennessee Senate at 24 years old. Well, you know, you have to understand, I have no wish to live under a petticoat government. So, of course, I tell everyone I'm going to vote nay on women's suffrage. But, uh, well, shucks, you all know how this ends. Earlier today, I received a letter from my widow mother back home. <laughs> <laughs> Dear son, when she were here, we have had nothing but rain since you left. <clears throat> She's always complaining about the rain because you can't take the fort out when it's wet. I haven't had the car out since you've been gone, and I worry that if this rainy weather doesn't let up, I won't be able to leave the house until the end of the summer. See what I mean? <laughs> now, I know you've seen enough of politicians to know it is not one of the greatest things to be one. Make sure you write mother every chance you get, for I'm always looking for a note from you while you are away. Oh, and make sure to be a good boy and help Mrs. Cat with her rats. <laughs> She's the one who put the rat in ratification. That's a funny one, Ma. <laughs> I've been watching to see how you stood, and I've not seen anything yet. Vote for suffrage, and don't keep them in doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I know I said I'd vote nay, but uh, you know a mother's advice is always the safest for a boy to follow. Well, my mother wants me to vote for ratification, and I would be ashamed if my mother or my sisters or my future wife were not as capable of exercising the ballot as I am. So I said I. Let them vote. And that is how the Susan B. Anthony Amendment was passed. <laughs>
And it takes all the people in the world helping women win the vote right now. Recently, Saudi Arabia won the vote for women in 2015. There is still so much work to do. A hundred years ago, in 1923, I introduced the Equal Rights Amendment to Congress to ensure that women have the same civil rights already accorded to men. And even though the 38 states needed to ratify it did, it still remains in legal limbo. There are a whole lot of naysayers working against it. But we also have a lot of supporters who know that the naysayers want us to quit. But we know <coughs> there is no progress without struggle. We also know that though sometimes it's difficult to keep going, progress is ultimately worth the struggle. Let's read the Equal Rights Amendment together, shall we? Everyone to your progress. Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. On account of sex. So many fought for so long and so hard for so few words. It's shocking how a government of men could luck with such extreme contempt on a movement that was simply asking for the right to vote. Someday, everybody will think it was always so, that the rights that a woman now possesses, the freedoms, the privileges, the enjoyments, always were hers. They'll have no idea that every single inch of ground she stands upon today was fought for with their very lives by a little handful of women of the past. Carrie, we all picked up the torch when it was passed to us. Who will you pass it to? Well, the thing about a torch is that you can offer it, but you're never so sure who's going to take it. I guess we'll find out 100 years hence. <laughs> A hundred years hence, what a change will be made in politics, morals, religion, and trade. In statesmen who wrangle or ride on a fence, these things will be altered. One hundred years hence, by men will all live by a new set of rules. Our prisons converted to national schools. All people will greet neighbors without pretense. All shall. One hundred years hence, one hundred years hence, a hundred years hence. <laughs> Oppression and war will be all in the past. Cheating and fraud will be over at last. But we'll all live together, neighbors and friends. The people will see it. A hundred years hence, and people of all sexes, people shall stand for beauty and harmony, govern the land. To think for oneself will be no offense. We'll all be good brothers and, and sisters. A hundred years hence, a hundred.